Hello everyone and welcome back to the multiplayer FPS tutorial series. Today we're going to be working on bullet impacts. The first thing we're going to do is go into our player controller prefab and add photon views onto both of our guns in order to let them execute RPCs. Then let's go into our single shot gun script and add a new RPC function. To do this we'll write pun RPC in square brackets. We're going to need to use the photon.pun namespace. If you're using Visual Studio you can just use alt enter, otherwise you'll have to type it at the top. We'll write void rpc underscore shoot and we'll pass in a vector3 called hit position. For now, let's add a debug.log statement so we can see where the hit position is. We'll call the rpc in our raycast check here. In order to call the rpc, we're going to need a reference to the photon view. Let's make a new variable at the top of our script, photon view pv. In our awake method, we'll set pv to be equal to git component photon view. Back in our raycast check, we can say pv.rpc, and then we'll pass in the name of our rpc method as a string, which is rpc underscore shoot. Then we'll choose rpc target.all because we want it to run on all clients. And finally, we'll pass in the hit.point as our hit position. If we test the game and shoot our gun, we'll see the position that was hit in the console. If we shoot at the sky, nothing will be logged in the console. That's because we're only calling our shoot RPC if we hit something, and the sky doesn't have any colliders in it. This is fine, because we only want to instantiate a bullet impact if we hit something. Now we can work on actually instantiating a bullet impact prefab at our hit position. We can delete this debug line, because we're going to replace it with an instantiation. In order to instantiate something, we're going to need a reference to the prefab, so let's go into our gun script and add a new reference here. Public game object bullet impact prefab. We're adding it in our gun class because we want it to be available to all guns. Every gun will leave an impact where the bullet hits, so we can just add it in our gun class to save us the hassle of adding it in every gun script. Now we can make the actual bullet impact prefab. In our game scene, I'm going to make a new 3D object quad. For now, I'm just going to give it the spawn point material so that it's easily visible against the other objects in our scene. Also scale it down to 0.2 by 0.2 by 0.2. We can press F2 to rename it, and we'll just call it Bullet Impact. Then we'll drag it into our prefabs folder to make it into a prefab. It's important to note that we're not making it into a photon prefab, just a regular prefab. This is because we're not going to be instantiating it with photon network.instantiate. Typically, we want to keep the number of networked prefabs at a minimum. Because the bullet impacts never move and never have to sync any kind of state, we're going to use a normal prefab to save on performance. Now that we've made it into a prefab, we can delete the bullet impact from our scene. Back in our single shot gun script, in our shoot RPC, we can say instantiate bullet impact prefab at the hit position with a rotation of quaternion.identity for now. Let's head back into Unity and assign the bullet impact prefab onto both of our gun scripts. If we test the game now, you can see that whenever we click on something, it'll instantiate that red bullet impact prefab. Something you'll notice fairly quickly is that they're all spawning in the same direction. And also when we look at them over here we can see that they're kind of intersecting with the cube and causing some weird texture glitches. Let's first fix that rotation, and it's not actually that difficult. All we need to do is rotate the bullet impact to align with the normal of the object we're hitting. And a normal is basically just the direction that a face is facing on a model. So let's just add another parameter to our RPC here and we'll call it vector3 hit normal. Then when we call the RPC in our shoot function, we'll pass in hit.normal as well. Next, we're going to replace the quaternion.identity here with quaternion.lookrotation. And then we'll pass in the hit normal and then vector3.up. And this method is just going to generate a quaternion for us which is aligned to the normal with vector3.up being upwards. And now if you start the game to test, you might think that it's completely broken and this doesn't work at all. But what's actually happening is they are indeed instantiating, but they are facing the opposite direction they should be. And because it's a quad, the backside is invisible, so we're only able to see the front side if we go around to the opposite side of the object. So to fix this, let's just stop the game and go into our bullet impact prefab, and we are just going to rotate this 180 degrees on the y-axis. 
So now that our bullet impact prefab is facing the opposite direction, let's go into our single shot gun script, and in our rotation here, let's just multiply it by bullet impact prefab dot transform rotation to add those two quaternions together. Now if we start the game and test again, we can see that it's working now for the direction, but they are still strangely clipping into the wall and causing some really, really weird effects. And that's because the bullet impact prefabs are on the exact same plane of existence as the edge of the cube, and so since they are both occupying the same space at the same time, Unity is trying to figure out which one to render on top of the other, and because they're in the exact same place, it can't figure it out. To fix this, all we have to do is offset the impact's position just slightly. So in our instantiation method where we're calculating the position, let's just add the hit normal times 0.001f, just a very small number, so that it offsets just slightly and renders on top of the cube. So now we can test the game again, and if we start shooting at stuff, we can see that it looks perfectly fine, there's no weird artifacts, and they're all rendering in the direction that the face is facing. So we can shoot all this stuff and it's gonna work perfectly. So let's actually build the game and test that, and once we join a room here with the other player, we can see that if we are to shoot them, then the bullet impact goes on their head, but if they die, it just floats here in the middle of nowhere. Sometimes it'll feel like we're not doing much damage at all, and we can see that if we shoot the bullet impacts while they're in the air, we're just adding more bullet impacts onto those bullet impacts. We can make these really weird long chains, and that's because the bullet impacts have colliders on them, which we forgot to remove. And also, if we shoot a player and they move, the bullet impact is going to stay floating in the air, even though we shot it onto them. So there's three bugs we gotta fix now. So let's head back into Unity. First bug we're gonna fix is the bullet impacts making a long chain in the air, so to fix that we can just remove the mesh collider from our bullet impact prefab. And if we start up the game now, you can see that if we try to shoot another bullet impact on a bullet impact, it's not going to work. They're just going to stay on that object. As for getting the bullet impacts to move with the player that they hit, and to destroy themselves when the player dies, we already have something for that in Unity. It's called parenting. If we parent the bullet impacts to whatever object we hit, they're going to move with that object, and they're going to destroy themselves when that object gets destroyed. You might be thinking that we should just pass the transform of the object that we hit into our shoot RPC and parent the bullet impact to it. In a single player game, this would work flawlessly, but in a multiplayer game, there's a big issue. In multiplayer, we're always trying to conserve how much is sent between players so that we can maintain a smooth and steady connection. In Photon specifically, only objects with a Photon view on them are synced. In order to send the transform of the object we hit over the network, we would have to sync every single object in our scene with a photon view, which would cause a lot of unnecessary stress on our connection. But we still need to get the transform of the object we hit, even if we can't sync it. The best way to do this is to just get the collider that the bullet impact is touching. We can do this with an overlap sphere. To start, let's make a new collider array called colliders, and we'll set it to physics.overlap sphere, and we'll pass in the hit position as the center of the sphere, and then 0.3 as the radius. This is just going to give us an array of every collider in a 0.3 meter radius around our position. Next, we'll make sure that the collider's length is not equal to zero, so that we can ensure that there's at least one collider near us. Next, we'll just move this entire instantiate method up by clicking on it and then holding Alt and using the up arrow key. Next, we'll just store a reference of this by passing the instantiation into a new variable, game object bullet impact object, and we'll just pass that in. And then on the next line, we can call bullet impact object dot transform dot set parent. Then we'll pass in colliders at the zeroth index and we'll say dot transform. Now we can go ahead and build the game to test this. And you can see if we shoot the other player and they die, the bullet impacts are going to be destroyed. And if we shoot the other player and they move around, you can see that the bullet impacts are going to be moving around on them. And that's all the bugs fixed that we discovered. There's one thing left I want to do, and that is to destroy the bullet impacts after a certain amount of time so that they don't clutter up the level. Thankfully, this is pretty easy to do, so let's just head back into Unity and add that. In our single shot gun script, right after we instantiate the bullet impact, we'll just say destroy bullet impact object in 10 seconds. Let's head back into Unity to test here, and you can see that after we've covered the ground with bullet impact effects, they're going to destroy themselves after 10 seconds and clean it up nicely. 
Anyways, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope that you enjoyed it. As always, thank you to my Patreon supporters, Mikels, Ojack Frost, Neil, Benzito, Biffinly, Dottie, Ghostboy, Mike Ock, Orchidy, Wacka Banana, William, and XZippyZackX.